Direct action, simply put, means cutting out the middleman, solving problems yourself rather than petitioning the authorities or relying on external institutions. Any action that sidesteps regulations and representation to accomplish goals directly is direct action. In a society in which political power, economic capital, and social control are centralized in the hands of an elite, certain forms of direct action are discouraged, to say the least. These forms are of particular interest to those who struggle against hierarchy and oppression. There are countless scenarios in which you might want to use this kind of direct action. Perhaps representatives of despicable multinational corporations are invading your town to hold a summit, and you want to participate in protests against them as more than just another body holding a sign. Perhaps they've been there a long time, operating franchises that exploit workers and ravage the environment, and you want to draw attention to or hinder their misdeeds. Perhaps you want to organize a festive, community-oriented event such as a street party. Direct action can plant a public garden in an abandoned lot or defend it by paralyzing bulldozers. It can be used to occupy empty buildings to house the homeless or to shut down government offices. Whether you're acting in secret with a trusted friend or in a mass action with thousands of others, the basic elements are the same. A Civilian's Guide to Direct Action What it is, what it's good for, how it works. First of all, brainstorming. Choose a project and devise a plan. If it makes sense for your action to be organized openly, establish a format such as a public spokes council in which to work out a strategy and tactics. Invite friends or circulate flyers or go door to door announcing it. Have a proposal in mind ahead of time in case no one else does. For more clandestine actions, brainstorm in a secure environment with a trusted friend or two. Keep your ideas to yourselves as you hash them out so you won't have already given them away when you're ready to try them. Brainstorming can start with a problem you want to solve or a social contribution you want to make. It can be informed by the resources you have, the kind of experience you desire, or the people you want to work with. You can plot a single short adventure or a long-term campaign. Often, the best brainstorming doesn't happen consciously, but in the course of daydreams and informal conversations. It's a good policy to trust that your craziest ideas can become reality and try them out. Even if you are attending a massive event organized by others, always have a plan so you can contribute to it in your own way. Goals. Establish and prioritize the goals of the action. Who is your action for? Is it directed at on-the-spot spectators, corporate media viewers, the owners of specific corporations, their stockholders, the police and government, other members of the radical community, the participants themselves? What is it intended to accomplish? Is it meant to communicate ideas, to call attention to an injustice, to inspire people, to secure resources, to set a particular tone, to inflict crippling material damages, to provide a deterrent, to demonstrate a model others can apply, to be a learning and bonding experience for those involved? Establishing the goals of the action from the outset will save a lot of headaches later when your plans shift and potential conflicts arise. Structure. Affinity groups. Work tightly with those you know. One of the most secure models for direct action organizing is the affinity group model. An affinity group is a group of friends who trust each other deeply and share the same goals. By working together over a long period of time, they become efficient and effective.
For a small action, the members of an affinity group can take on different roles. For a larger action, affinity groups can work with other affinity groups in a cluster, each group playing a role. This can make decision making easier than it would be in one big mass, as each group can send a representative to discussions. Clusters of affinity groups can work together over long periods, building trust and effectiveness. Recruiting. Bring in other individuals and groups carefully. Once you have a plan to propose, figure out how many people you need to accomplish it. Invite only people you trust to keep secrets and that you are sure will want to join in. Everyone you invite who doesn't end up participating is a needless security risk. Extend invitations one by one, or affinity group by affinity group, so those who decide against participating will not know anything about the others involved. Likewise, ask general questions at first, and don't reveal critical details of the plan such as exact target or date until a person is ready to make a commitment. As people are brought into a plan and go on to bring in others, make sure everybody has the same idea of how cautiously this should be done. As more people become involved in the project, it's also important that everyone understands how much commitment is called for. Sometimes the group that first presents a plan will be more invested in it than others. If they do months of work preparing, only to have another group they depended on drop out at the last minute, all that work is wasted. Everyone shares the responsibility of being honest from the beginning about what others can expect from them. At the same time, those who initiate a project should be careful to share ownership of it with everyone else involved. Dynamics. Make sure power is distributed evenly within your group. Make all decisions in a participatory and consensual manner. If your group is large enough to warrant it, use an informal or formal consensus meeting process to make sure all voices are heard. Set an agenda for each meeting and pick a facilitator to keep meetings on track and another person to keep track of whose turn it is to speak. The better structured your process, the more likely it is that everyone will participate equally. Be aware of internal dynamics that may be unbalanced, such as those between people with different privilege, or between local organizers and participants from out of town. The more everyone participates in planning and preparing for the action, the more invested in its success everyone will be. A group with good internal dynamics is smarter than any individual can be. Together the group can work out the best way to apply the ideas brought in by individuals. Make sure everyone feels supported and comfortable throughout the project. Check in with each other outside of formal structures as well as inside them. Maintaining morale is a critical, though often overlooked, aspect of successful direct action organizing. Keep level heads in the face of surprises and uncertainty. The Basics Security Culture Be intentional about how you share information. Security culture is a way to avoid unhealthy paranoia by minimizing risks at all times. If you and your friends always conduct yourselves wisely, you'll have little to fear from infiltration and surveillance. The essence of security culture is that information is shared on a need-to-know basis. In some cases, the whole town will need to know about your action for it to be a success. In others, it will be crucial that the action is never spoken of outside the circle of those directly involved. Everyone privy to the action needs to share a sense of what security has been deemed appropriate and to respect others' needs regarding safety. Consent is as important in security as it is in sexual intimacy. It is never acceptable to violate another's wishes about security issues. Make your own security needs explicit from the beginning. It can be helpful for people working on a high security project to swear an oath of silence together.
never violate agreements about security, no matter how much time has passed since the action. When a group comes together to work on a project, make sure everyone present is vouched for by others in the group as reliable and trustworthy, and is willing to perjure themselves rather than send their comrades to jail. From the beginning of a project, you should operate according to the highest possible level of security it might require. You can always lower the level of caution later, but if you start out being careless, you close off a lot of options you might later miss. Be aware of all the ways your actions can be monitored or tracked, the records of surveillance cameras, the purchases and phone calls you make, both the numbers you dial and the things you say. The fingerprints you leave on the batteries in a flashlight as well as on the outside of it, for example. The places you go and the people with whom you are seen. Be especially careful about the location of meetings, the items you throw in your trash, and the files you have on your computer. Devise codes and prepare alibis as need be. Legal Support Prepare an infrastructure to provide support during and after the action. Everyone involved in the action should be aware of and prepared for the risks they are taking and the potential criminal charges associated with them. It's important not to take things further than you feel ready to go. If you get hurt or arrested or otherwise in trouble while engaging in a level of risk for which you are not emotionally prepared, the effects can be debilitating. Far better that you get started slowly, building a sustainable involvement with direct action projects that can continue over a lifetime, than rush into an action, have a bad experience, and swear off all such activity. If your action may result in arrests, prepare a legal support structure for those who participate. This could include a legal aid number for arrestees to call, legal observers to monitor and document the actions of police, money for bail, lawyers to provide immediate support to arrestees and to represent them in court, and a circle of people prepared to offer emotional, financial, and logistical support throughout court cases. The legal aid number should be open to receive incoming calls at all times throughout the action. Bear in mind that often you cannot call a cell phone from jail. It should not incriminate the arrestees or the people who receive the calls. If part of your alibi is that you don't know each other, don't all call the same number from jail. If you fear you will forget the number, write it on your body in permanent marker. The person operating the legal aid number should know the full names of those who may be arrested so as to check on their status. To bail someone out of jail, you can either give the entire amount of the bail to the court system, in which case you will presumably receive it back when the legal process is finally concluded, or you can go to a bail bondsman and pay 10% of that. In the latter case, the bondsman's fees may cost you a significant amount of money. If no one can pay bail for someone, they may sit in jail until their court date, although in the case of minor infractions, it can happen that police release people on their own reconnaissance so as not to have to deal with them. If you are risking arrest, decide whether you want to have your identification on you to expedite processing, or you want to be without it so they cannot identify you immediately. A group of arrestees who refuse to give their information can tie up the legal process and sometimes gain bargaining power. If you need any forms of medication, consider hiding them on your person or carry a note from a doctor explaining what you need. Find a sympathetic and trustworthy lawyer, or perhaps a few of them for large actions. A lawyer cannot represent more than one defendant on the same charges. You can research which lawyers have taken on similar cases in the past, or approach the American Civil Liberties Union or National Lawyers Guild. If you don't give away anything sensitive, you can ask sympathetic lawyers about the charges associated with hypothetical acts, or specify the dates and times you may require their services, but don't let them know anything that could implicate them. In order to do their job, they need to be able to prove that they are not connected to anything illegal.
Any community whose members may suffer arrest would do well to establish a bail fund in advance. This can save a lot of running around in the middle of emergencies. Throw benefit shows, set aside info shop profits, solicit donations from wealthy sympathizers, have your friends at the university book you speaking dates at their school in return for student funds. Make sure the bail fund stays with someone who is even-handed, trustworthy, and always easy to reach. Likewise, consider what your media strategy will be in different scenarios, whether it will be wiser to attract a lot of attention and support to the case or to try to keep it under the radar. Media. Establish what coverage you want and get it. Long before an action, when you are establishing and prioritizing goals, work out exactly how much media coverage you want from which sources and how you are going to obtain or avoid it. This could mean composing and sending out a press release, who, what, when, where, how, why, or a communique electing a spokesperson to represent your project to the press, inviting corporate or independent reporters to the actions or to a press conference, faxing announcements or making press calls, offering interviews in person or anonymously over the phone, or having members of your group cover documentation themselves. If you want to avoid certain kinds of coverage, it could also mean assigning a participant to make sure photographers do not aim their cameras at those involved. If you are communicating with the media, compose talking points, sound bites that your spokesperson repeats to be sure they get in the media coverage, give representatives of the press as little material to work with as possible, so you can control what they use. Watch which reporters tend to provide positive coverage and approach them personally. Set up a web page or use an existing website. If possible, get this address into corporate media coverage to reroute their viewers or readers to your own media. You can also provide information to the public yourselves by postering, pirate radio, mailing out letters, or starting conversations door to door. If your action warrants high security, send your communique from a public computer that leaves no record of who uses it. Be aware of how the devices you use can incriminate you. For example, electronic cameras imprint photos with coding that can be used to identify the camera that took them. Groundwork Planning Study the context, chart a strategy, plan for different scenarios. Proper planning is the essence of a safe, effective direct action. Keeping your goals and priorities in mind along with the resources you have to work with, plot and compare different strategies. Weigh out the risks and potential rewards of each. Always pick the safest way to accomplish a given objective, and make sure you can afford to take the risks you choose. It often happens that as the planning process goes on, a project will get more and more ambitious and hazardous, until some of those involved start to have doubts. At this point it may be necessary to work out a safer or scaled down version of the plan so it can still take place. There are countless factors to take into account in planning. You must pick the most effective tactics in the context of the current social and political situation. You must pick the best location for the action and take into account all its attributes. Likewise, you must pick the best date and time of day. You must bear in mind the others who will be in the area and how they can be expected to react. Will they be sympathetic or will hostile vigilantes interfere with your activities? You must coordinate the timing of different parts of the action, predicting how long each will take and figure out how those involved in the action will communicate. When predicting the responses of others, say for example, the police, Consider the factors influencing them. Are they expecting what you're planning? Or do you have the element of surprise? If you have the advantage of surprise, how long will it last? Will there be a lot of attention focused on the event? Will it be immediately apparent what you are doing? Will there be middle-class citizens or reporters around? And will their presence put a damper on the authorities' response? What is their strategy likely to be? 
Do their bosses want them to come down hard on you or to avoid provoking a scene? How well do they communicate? How fast do they move? Where are they located and what routes will they take? Don't underestimate the challenges of simple logistical matters, such as transporting people or communicating in stressful situations. Don't forget to plan an exit strategy either. Because plans rarely come off exactly as they are laid, it's important to have backup plans worked out for different scenarios. If blank, will blank. If blank, will blank. Have a few different objectives in mind, in case your ideal one turns out to be impossible. Having a basic structure for communications and decision making in place will help you be prepared for situations that play out differently than any of the scenarios you had imagined. Be careful not to put some people at risk for others' actions. The authorities will probably charge whomever they get their hands on with the worst crimes they can. So it's important both to get those who take risks out of the area safely and to make sure serious charges can't stick to anyone else. In some cases, you can bring together multi-leveled groups in which everyone knows the general goal, but only a few know critical details such as what the target is until the last minute, or who is carrying out the riskiest activity. Be prepared for the best case scenario as well as the worst. New ideas, if they are good ones, tend to fail because people don't take them far enough, whereas older ideas usually fail because they are too familiar to everyone, including the authorities. Sometimes the best results come from applying familiar tactics in entirely new settings. Look back in time for precedence, Occasions when similar actions were attempted in similar contexts, these can be very instructive. As you gather years of experience and learn from the successes and failures of others, you'll develop skills for predicting and preparing for a wide variety of situations. Preparation. Gather equipment and dress appropriately. Once your plans are laid, draw up a timeline until your action, counting backwards from the big day, to establish the deadlines for all the pieces that must be in place. Early on in the planning, work out what funding, materials, and other resources you will need and how to obtain them. If security is a priority, obtain what you need in such a way that it cannot be traced to you. Affinity groups from out of town can acquire potentially incriminating materials far from the site of the action. Make sure everyone has appropriate clothes for the action, including different outfits in layers if necessary. Take security issues into account as they relate to clothing. If everyone is dressing in black for anonymity, be sure no one's clothes have unique identifying features. Likewise, if you're going to be posing as random passers-by, remember that civilian dress is different in Miami than it is in Seattle. If timing is important, make sure everyone's watches are synchronized. Double check to make sure everything is ready by your deadline. Go through a practice run, verbally if not physically. If participants are unfamiliar with the area, distribute maps. If need be, plant necessary materials in the area in advance of the action. Be careful not to give anything away by doing so. Scouting. Study the site of the action and keep up with changes. Before the action, study the area carefully. Chart safe routes in and out. Look for hiding places, obstacles, potential targets, and surveillance cameras, including those in ATMs and spotlights. Note how long it takes to travel key distances and be aware of the visibility from and of key locations. How close are the authorities? How long will it take them to arrive? Can their approach be delayed? Who else is in the area? While scouting, be careful not to call attention to yourself or leave an obvious record of your passing. Be sure to do at least some of your scouting at the same time of day as the planned action. And if possible, do a quick check immediately before it to make sure nothing has changed. If your action calls for daunting tasks such as climbing a steep rooftop, it may be good to make an actual practice run at some point.
Information can also be gathered from photos, maps, and brochures. Aerial maps may be available on the internet. In some cases, you can obtain information from a tourist center or call and ask questions on a pretext as a student doing a report, for example, or even receive a guided tour. Once you've collected a lot of information, it can be helpful to consolidate the important parts into a map suited to your needs. Be careful to dispose of all your paperwork securely. Roles. Divide up responsibilities and set up decision-making structures. Establish all the roles necessary to pull off your plan, and make sure every one of these is filled. Roles might include lookouts, scouts, police liaisons, media spokespeople, internal embedded media, legal aid contacts, legal observers, medics, distractions, plants, for example people disguised as innocent bystanders who are ready to intervene if necessary, or who will politely honk their horns while a barricade is erected in front of them. Gateway drivers, people to transport materials, people to receive information and make tactical decisions, and people to carry out the actual action. In some situations, it is wise to have understudies for important roles, in case it turns out at the last minute that someone can't participate. This is especially true if you don't know in advance what the date of your action will be. For example, if it is to coincide with the beginning of a war not yet declared. Diplomacy. Consider the way the action will affect others. If your action is taking place during or as a part of a larger event, there may be large meetings at which different groups try to coordinate their efforts. These can be useful, but they tend to consume a lot of time and energy, so make sure you go into them knowing exactly what you hope to accomplish. Whether you're acting in the midst of thousands of other activists or far away from anyone, Take into account the way your actions will affect other people. Will your actions endanger others? Will they provoke police repression? If so, will others bear the brunt of it, and is it possible to offset this? Will your actions make it more difficult for other people to do important work in a given community? Are there negotiations or reassurances that should be made to others before, during, or after the action? Honor all agreements you make with other groups. Some might be willing to help you, with or without knowledge of the specific details of what you're doing. Over time, if you prove reliable and considerate, you'll build alliances with them. During and after the action. Awareness. Stay alert throughout the action. Awareness is key to the success of any action. Often the atmosphere and the conditions that determine it can change very quickly. It is important to keep up with what is going on around you and to have established in advance how you will react to a given scenario. For example, is the arrival of one police car a big deal? How about ten? Is it common for police to tail marchers in this city? While you can never be certain of exactly what will happen, going over possible scenarios in advance and having an idea of how your group wants to deal with them will give everyone a more solid idea of how to react and how not to overreact as the situation develops. When informing others of a development, announce the raw information not the conclusions you may have drawn from it. The police are putting on gas masks, not they're going to gas us. So others can draw their own conclusions. Resist the urge to panic and the tendency to get carried away as well. Communications. Keep each other informed. During the action, scouts can keep track of changes in the terrain, such as arriving police, crowd movements, others' activities nearby, and safe zones. They can use communication systems such as cell phones, text messaging, two-way radios, or whistles to keep in touch. Audio or visual signals such as car horns or fireworks can also be useful. A police scanner can be used to monitor police communications. To make communication more efficient, scouts can report to an individual or subgroup in the center of the action. In a larger setting, they can phone in their findings to a central information hub, which others can call with questions.
Just as communications equipment can make you more efficient and effective, it also increases the risk of surveillance. You can use codes and code names, but be judicious. Complicated codes are easy to forget, and prosecutors can argue that your codes meant something more drastic than they actually did. Even if no other communication system is used, it can be useful to have the option of an abort signal for emergencies. Dispersal. Quit while you're ahead. A safe escape is the most commonly overlooked part of direct action organizing. Be sure to have an exit strategy worked out in advance. If you'll be in a large group, especially with others who haven't been part of the planning process, think about how to avoid the herd mentality that keeps crowds together after it would be better to split up. Know when to press your advantage and when to quit, when to run as fast as you can, and when to walk nonchalantly. Discard anything that could incriminate you, if possible, in a place it will not be found. Wait to change your clothes until you're sure you're no longer under observation. If need be, gather in a safe place afterwards and make sure everyone is accounted for. Collect bail money, seek outside assistance, write press releases. While everyone involved is still around, get contact information for anyone who might be able to testify or provide documentation to assist arrestees. Debriefing. Regroup to discuss what went well and what lessons can be learned. After the action, destroy any evidence that could be used against you. Keep tools that could be tied to the action in a hiding place outside your home. Get together in a secure setting and go over what happened. Follow up on ongoing matters such as supporting those with court cases, providing further clarification to the public as to the goals of and the ideas behind the action and sorting out conflicts. Celebrate your victories. Offer each other constructive criticism. Learn from your mistakes and lay plans for the next project.